Hello, it's Chris from Outs Daily and I'm back with another wonderful collaboration. We have a very special guest coming up today. Maybe you know who this person is because they have many years of experience and is one of the best places on the internet to improve your IELTS speaking. So if you want to know who this person is, stick around. They're coming up in just a few seconds. All right, as promised, this person is ready and waiting at the other side of the world. I'm going to put my earphones in and we're going to talk to this person um, all the way from Spain. It is Keith. Keith, it is so good to see you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hello, Chris. Nice to see you too. I'm really pleased to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation and uh, yeah, delighted to be here with you all most welcome and and I just all of our students on the IELTS Daily channel will be so happy to see you. I'm sure they've already seen your videos. Keith, tell us a little bit about IELTS speaking success. Right, well that's very kind Chris. Um, so I have a YouTube channel, um, English Speaking Success, and it does focus, as you mentioned, on helping students with their IELTS speaking. That's the main thing that I do. I've had the channel about two and a half years now um, and it's just full of videos to help students with their speaking, their confidence, their fluency as well as some tips for the IELTS speaking test. It's a phenomenal resource so if they haven't checked it out they definitely should. Now we would like to know a little bit about you if possible if you wouldn't mind sharing mm. a little bit about your life. Where are you based and yep. what's your IELTS history? Right. Okay. So I am based in Spain. Um, I live in Santander. I've been here for about three years now. Um, I'm actually from the UK. So I was born in Manchester in England. And then I left England after university. Um, I was teaching English for ooh, 10 plus years in Spain and France and then decided to move. And I moved over to Asia. I moved over to China. And I was working there with the British Council on different education projects. Um, so still in education, but away from teaching, I was I was doing projects to support English teachers in primary and secondary schools in China, Taiwan and Malaysia. Um, and then I kind of shifted. I think I, I, I shifted. I kind of missed teaching. I missed the direct interaction with students. And so having done a master's degree when I was working in digital digital education, I decided to go alone and to set up an online space to help students uh, of English. Um, and I chose IELTS and I began teaching IELTS. I began training students in IELTS and slowly over time from classes to doing online courses. And then I began the, the YouTube channel. And it's just taken off since then. And I'm just, um, I love doing it. It's great. So roller coaster, ups and downs. It's part of life, isn't it? We all ha yeah. we have things that we, we, we love to do and we sometimes come back to them. So good on you. Yeah. And thanks so much for sharing all your knowledge with <clears throat> the students. And that's what brings us on to today's um, kind of collaboration. I want to teach students that they have a, a great resource in you. And we are going to have a look at a kind of a common topic that may appear in the test and we're going to discuss some language around that topic and hopefully you'll be able to share some of your experience with us and with me and we can talk about that. So you know what the first topic is don't you and I've given you a little bit of preparation. <laughs> Yes. Uh, the, the topic is names and yep. I'm going to put forward some questions to you and you're going to maybe help me out and help the students out on some mm -hmm. vocabulary, some ideas on mm -hmm. what they can do uh, in the test. So are you ready to start? I am indeed. Yes, let's do it. So the topic is names and this is a, a question that may appear in the test, but it could be something that you have in everyday life. So do you like your name? Well, let me answer the question first and then we can talk about it. So do you like your name? Actually, it's a strange question because I've never thought about whether I like my name or not. I think in England, we don't tend to put too much importance on names. Um, unlike China, for example, where I, I remember parents would, would spend hours trying to choose a, an auspicious name for their child. It has huge importance. So 
So I, I like my name, but I don't think too much about it. <clears throat> Wonderful. Thanks. Now, is your name short for anything? Because I want to talk about the idea of long names, short names, nicknames. Mm. So is mm. your name short for anything? Actually, my name is not short for anything. Um, it's one of those kind of single syllable names, Keith. Um, and I read somewhere that Keith is, is a no-nonsense, powerful name because it's one syllable. <laughs> so it, it's not like a, a lot of people in England may have double-barreled names. Here in Spain, there's lots of double-barreled names. There's Jose Maria and Manuel Jose, and they, they have longer names. Um, but I, yeah, I, I just have Keith and I, I don't have a nickname either. Maybe because it's already a very short name. Now, my name, Chris is actually short for something. And I'm going to ask you, can you guess what my name is short for? I'm guessing your name is short for Christopher. That is absolutely correct. But it's not the <laughs> only shortened version that, that Chris could be. So Chris could be Christian or maybe even Christoph. Mm. So there are a few different ways that Chris can be shortened. But the most common way is Christopher, which is my full name. Um, right. Wonderful. Do you have a middle name? I do, actually. Yes. Um, tradition. We have, we have a family tradition um, that we give the middle name of the uncle or the aunt in the family. So my father's brother is called Michael. So my middle name is Michael. Incredible. Um, do you know, I have a middle name. My middle name is Ryan. And my middle name is actually the surname of, I think it was my great grandma. So that's the tradition in my family that we actually take the surname and we use it as a middle name, which is somewhat right. interesting. I want to uh, lead us on to another kind of question now. And this question is about remembering names. And mm. this is uh, a common uh, thing that, that people talk about, maybe at parties or you know at work. Are you good at remembering names? Um. I'm going to use a bit of a classic idiom, right? But it's true. I have a memory of a sieve, a memory like a sieve. Um, I am not good at remembering names, um, particularly that situation you talked about when you're at a party and you bump into a group of people and they reel off their names one after the other. You know, Jack, John, James, Tony, Brian. And you've got you know, no chance of remembering their names. So I find it very challenging. How do you go about trying to remember people's names? I have the same problem as you that, that it's really difficult sometimes for me to put faces to names. And I'll, you know, I work with so many people like yourself and in, with students and I tend to meet them and I'll have a course with them. And I try to picture them as a, somebody else that, that I know. Um, so I, I use this kind of visual technique and it, I, it's really hard when we, when we deal with so many people all the time. But one of the great things about names that, that I love being a teacher, we have so many of these wonderfully exotic names. And I love mm -hmm. to hear names from different parts of the world. And it's a, 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 f a fascinating thing for me to, to learn about how, you know, the, the origins of names and um, the different cultural kind of significances that that. that that happen with names. It's, it's really interesting. And I know that in Spain, you have this thing called name days. Is that right? Like name a saint. Name days. Are you talking about the saint days? Correct. Yeah. So it's weird. Yes, this. absolutely. So every, every single day in the year is named after a saint. And I didn't realize there were so many saints, but <laughs> the Spanish obviously have, have uh, found them. And so people are named after saints and and that will be your name day as you call it so if for example san jose is tomorrow then if my name is jose then tomorrow will be my saints day um and a day that you can celebrate it's it's a catholic country so obviously that religion plays a, a a key role in in names and traditions like that incredible and that would be something that, that any student in the ielts test could say you know i in my country we have name days or you know saint days and mine is in january and and they could talk about that um, and it would allow them to expand their answer which would be wonderful now there's a few pieces of vocabulary that i want to ask you about um, and maybe you can explain that to the students so what would it mean if i said somebody made a name for themselves 
Right, that's a nice expression. Basically, that means that they have become famous in a certain field or well known for something. Um, so we could say, for example, that you, Chris, have made a name for yourself in the field of IELTS, online IELTS. <clears throat> well, yeah, great. And what would it mean if I said something has your name on it? Oh, then that means it's uh, it's something that is destined for you, something that you should have. Um, <clears throat> you know, if we get if we go shopping and my sister says to me, "That hat has your name on it, Keith," then it means I it's for me. I should buy it. it it's a perfect match for me. What a great expression. Now, what mm -hmm. about if I said somebody <clears throat> stop dropping names or that person is a name dropper? Yeah, what an interesting expression. Nothing to do with dropping the name, but I, I think it comes from dropping the name into the conversation. <clears throat> so if you're a name dropper, then you're mentioning famous people's names, um, especially people that you may know, to kind of show off to other people. You know, I, I may say, oh, I was having lunch with um, Donald Trump's son last week, and I'm just dropping the name Donald Trump as, as a kind of a way to show off my connection with them. It's not true, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, if you were um, at a party and, and you didn't hear somebody and they introduced themselves, how would you maybe ask them to repeat? What would you take? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Could you say that again? Yeah, it's a good expression, isn't it? And it's this idea of catching your name. And that could yeah. be um, something that in an IELTS exam, sorry, I didn't catch your name if, if, the exam, if you didn't hear the examiner's name. It's totally normal to ask those type of questions. The examiner is just a person. And I say this all the time to the students. If you, don't, <laughs> if you didn't hear a question or if you didn't catch the person's name, you are welcome to ask those types of questions. There is nothing formal about the IELTS speaking test. And I think a lot of misconceptions are around this, this topic that you can only oh, I, use formal language. Yeah, I totally agree, Chris. I, I think there's a, an over sense of formality. I think some students almost feel that, that the examiner is a police man or a police woman, that they're gonna catch them out and throw them into prison. Um, it's not, you're absolutely right. It, it's very relaxed, it's informal, it's conversational English. You know, just speak as you would, as I am to you now, um, and you'll be fine for students. One thing that I, I see all the time, and this is just before we wrap up and finish here, is that some students say that you're not allowed to use the word you in an IELTS test. For example, if I'm having a conversation with you and I say, um, well, you might have heard about this and I've used the word you in there and people in different countries think that you're not allowed to do that. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Um, you're correct that students think that, and you're also correct in th in saying it's a mistake, uh, that, that it's not true that you can say you to the examiner. It's absolutely fine. Again, it's, it's a trait of natural spoken English. Um, you can say, you know, uh, you might know this. It's absolutely fine. I, I suspect that maybe some trainers are becoming a bit overly formal, um, but without being fully aware of what the criteria is. So it's absolutely fine. What an incredible piece of advice. Thanks so much for that. <laughs> now, that brings us to the end of today's video, which we've looked at the topic of names. I hope we've given lots of food for thought for students to think about this topic, how they would maybe answer it. We're going to come back for another video, aren't we? And we're going to look at a different topic. And we this are. video is actually going to be released on your channel. So I recommend that everybody who's watched this video today <laughs> goes over to Keith's channel if they haven't already subscribed. Subscribe to Keith's video, subscribe to Keith's channel, and then you will have the access to the next video, which we're going to release very soon. Keith, thanks so much for today. It's been a real pleasure. I don't know if you have any closing, closing words before you go. Well, the same here, Chris. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I, I enjoy collaborating and I enjoy this idea of collaborating to help students get really good quality material to support their, their study. Um, so it's been a pleasure and I look forward to the, the next video just around the corner. Exactly. So thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you very, very soon. Take care. Bye for now.